in Sydney, Australia for slamming them, saying they're a, a meat pie pack of forwards. The forwards are today in the Australian side. Greg Dowling and Steve Roach up front. Roy Simmons is the hooker. Our second rowers today are Noel Cleal and Brian Niebling. And the lock forward is uh, Bobby Lindner. Down on the sideline today to bring you all the action from the sideline is none other than Johnny Harker from ATN 7. John's got with him the Australian uh, uh, lock forward today, reserve lock forward, Paul Langman. Well, Paul, you've uh, been in the dressing room with the players. I, I bet you'd like to be out there today yourself, but how are they feeling? Oh, the boys are uh, pumped up for a big occasion today, uh, especially the forwards after the uh, criticism they've uh, uh, received from uh, the media and, and from the general public, and uh, I expect a big effort from our forwards today. Well, they'll call pussycats. I don't think they would have appreciated that. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, you should ask the England uh, team after the game and see if our forwards are pussycats. Uh, yeah, they're out there to do a job. They're going to do it today. We're going to play it in the forwards or out wide. Where do you think we can beat them? James one in the forwards and uh, today will be one in the forwards but the backs may score the tries but uh, both like Steve Brakes and uh, Greg Dowling will lead the way. Thanks very much and here comes the side Peter Peters. Okay here's the Australian on the pitch now here at Old Trafford. Led out by Peter Sterling. Uh, Roy Simmons is there. The entire Australian side. Wally Lewis there talking to his side. Soaking up the atmosphere here. Australia onto the pitch first and they're running to all sections of the ground trying to limb up, limber up it. Bitterly told here at Old Trafford and Brett Tenney, the lackadaisical Brett Tenney, always very nonchalant in his actions before he kicks off, before he kicks off a game. But once it starts, he certainly gets into first gear, Greg Hartley. And I think that uh, the Australians look absolutely superb. I think their fitness level is 100%. And these Tommies are in for a big shock here this afternoon. Well, the big roar will come up shortly. Here we go, here we go. The familiar song that's sung in football, no matter what the code here in Britain. And here we go, here we go. It's the chant from the crowd. And here is the roar now as the locals come on. The Great Britain side and their side today. Fullback, Joe Lydon. The wingers are Tony Marchant and Henderson Gill. Gary Schofield and Ellery Hanley are the centres. The 5'8 is Tony Myler. Halfback, Derek Fox. The forwards are in the front row, Kevin Ward and John Fieldhouse. David Watkinson from Hull KR is the hooker and captain. The second rowers are Lee Crook and Ian Potter. And Andy Goodway is the lock forward for Great Britain. Their reserve, Sean Edwards from Wigan and Andy Platt from St Helens. Very interesting in the Australian lineup. The reserves are both backs. Terry Lamb and Mal Meninga. And we could see a shot, Greg Hartley, if one of the forwards are injured. Well, Mal Meninga, I understand, will go into the second row. Terry Lamb will cover the lock position and any problems out in the back line. So, Coach Don Ferner gambling in his first test match on Great Britain soil. Yes, Pete, well, it would have appeared to me that the players that uh, have been playing in the last four matches, the, the forwards, that is, that they haven't uh, come up to expectations. Hence, Ferner has selected two backs as his reserves, but uh, I think you wouldn't have any problems at all putting those two fellows uh, into the side once they switch around. OK, uninterrupted rugby league live from England through ATN Channel 7 and 2GB News Talk 87. The players don't stop for any act, 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 and we won't either here today from Old Trafford. Once the action starts, we'll be going right through and then back in the ATN 7 studios Steve Rebilliard and Roy Masters will go through the first half and then summarise the test matchup at full time. So you're going to see all the action on ATN, ATN 7 and hear it through 2GB News Talk 87 in the first simulcast tried from Great Britain. And uh, this is certainly going to be a memorable test match. The Great Britain side have uh, trained harder than any other Great Britain side uh, since their uh, last few defeats by Australia. They are really thrashed by the 1982 Invincibles and this is a very happy Australian side. Wally Lewis at the moment going along his team members, shaking hands with every one of the side and you've got to go through this very young side and see that only in the back line, Gene Miles, Brett Kenny, Lewis himself and Peter Sterling have had experience in Great Britain and in the forward, Greg Dowling has played football here for Wigan and Noel Cleal has also played here for Witness, but the rest of the Australian side is untried on Great Britain 
soil and that's where the English side feel they can measure up to the Australians today. The very flamboyant postman from Perpignan is the referee tonight. Julian Raskignar is Greg. He can be a very, very iffy conveyance. Yes, mate. Uh, once he starts blowing the fee out of his whistle, uh, he can cause problems. But I don't think he'll do that in the first 10 minutes of this match. I think he'll uh, just have a look at him and... Uh, what he has to do, I suppose if it does start up, he'll certainly get involved. OK, the Australian national anthem being played now, and the Australian side in an arc around their captain, Wally Lewis, who's holding the football, and a very tense Australian side here. The crowd has built up uh, to almost 40,000 here at Old Trafford. A magnificent sight. The rain is, uh, is uh, just... Uh, coming down now, not as heavy as it was earlier in the day. It's just a light drizzle now, but uh, the side defending the northern end of the ground will certainly have the advantage of a very strong wind. And the Australians now standing motionless as the national anthem is played. And uh, there's a big roar from the contingent of Australia here, a flattering of, uh, of the green and gold in the Whitbread stand here. And uh, certainly over five and 600 uh, Australians here on supporters tour, tours supporting the kangaroos. And here's the Great Britain side now with the national anthem and they're joining in in the singing of God Save the Queen here at Old Trafford. Well, let's just take up the atmosphere here now. Rastignar is all decked out in yellow and black. Australia defending the northern end of Old Trafford. They've got the advantage of the wind in the first half. And uh, the Union Jack being carried off the field by Sean Edwards and also by Andy Platt. So heaps of action here, ready to go. And this Great Britain side all fired up for a big effort here at Old Trafford today. First rugby league test match of the series. Australia have won one of the last 10 test matches in succession and they're heading for 11 today here at Old Trafford. So Great Britain trying to stop the rock. The rival skippers in centre field now with referee Julian Rastignaras and the hooker is Watkinson and hooker Watkinson, the captain of the Great Britain side and Wally Lewis captaining the Australian Kangaroos for the first time on Great Britain soil. So there's the toss. Australia now running into the wind. They uh, had to hope to run with it. And that's the way they wanted to go. But Great Britain have won the toss. So Australia will now kick off and run into this strong breeze. So everything favouring England right at the moment, Greg. Peter, but uh, I don't think it's going to uh, worry the Australians too much. As a matter of fact, I think they're going to be uh, too fast for this Great Britain side. Although... I remember Ward, I came over here in 1981 and refereed a series in France and uh, he took the uh, side across to play the Frenchman and boy is he a tough customer. OK, here we go, the start of the first rugby league test and uh, Australia versus Great Britain. Wally Lewis to kick off for Australia. Well, Lewis standing steady now, Raskinar is uh, just checking the English team, making sure that everything is A-OK. -okay. There's Lewis now, game underway and a high kick here to be taken on the far side. down to the ground. Ian Potter it was. He gets up to play the ball just inside his own quarter line across to Derek Fox. Good pass then on the crook. But he's got the Australians inside the five. There he goes. Swinging arm. 30 metres out from the Englishman's line. Brett Kenny offside in the Australian back line. Also the Australian winger Michael O'Connor and Rastignar is... The football, he really should have taken that one, so that will enforce a scrum to go down now, 32 metres out from the Australian goal line. Yes, well now uh, it could be on as these two packs meet. Yeah, I don't think there'll be any love lost between these two packs of forwards, and Rastignaras, knowing that, is trying to keep them apart. Australia's Peter Sterling to feed the scrum. And it's going to be an Australian scrum win, picked up by Sterling, given back to Michael O'Connor, and he's put down in a solid tackle 30 metres out from his own line. He'll get up to play the ball. He goes back down to Simmons. Good pass across the Dowling, charging forward. 
Pollock covered a fence over the top and a bone crushing tackle by Potter. First man in, he's been pinched to penalty to Australia. 32 metres out from the Australian goal line. Yes, Ward, number eight for Great Britain, lying over the man playing the ball, and it was Greg Dowling taking it up like a steam train for Australia. Lewis kicking into this stiff breeze here at Old Trafford has found touch now. Nine metres on the Great Britain side of halfway. That is have to be taken by Simmons. Straight out now into the arms of Great Judging Ford. He's knocked on the ground. Good tackle by Fieldhouse. He'll get up to play the ball. Simmons now in possession. He sends a good pass across into the arms. Going straight down the field too in a solid tackle. No, uh, Linda, he'll get up to play the ball. Just outside the quarter line. Goes across to Sterling. Drops it off the end of the toe. Chips over the head. The Australia's going through. Oh, it's been enough. Picked up and just short of the line. But I thought I'd knock on... And the referee now will put a scrum down five metres out from the English goal line. Yes, well, there was a chance there for Australia. Knock on by Great Britain. It was followed through by Brett Kenny, but uh, ruled a knock on by Julian Raskignaras. Very short in goal area here at Old Trafford. It's a soccer ground, not a rugby league ground. And Sterling is well aware of that, that he's a uh, little chip through. He hasn't got a lot of room behind the uh, try line. There's the scrum, and uh, it's collapsed, and referee Raskignaras is... Uh, well, I don't know what he's doing. He's, he's be, putting another scrum he's down. putting another Pete. scrum down, waving his arms around. Ball being fed now by Fox. The Great Britain straight out now into the arms of Gill. Lewis goes up to him, gets past him, but now he's pulled down. He'll get up and play a set out from his own line. It's gone straight back into the arms of uh, Hanley. Hanley racing across Phil. Lewis around the legs to pull him down five metres out from uh, the English goal line. Getting up to play the ball. Back now it goes into the arms of Goodway. Goodway he races across field and he's knocked to the ground. He'll get up to play the ball 10 metres out from the English line. Plays it, goes across now to Fox. Straight out now to Lee Crook. He gives it out into the arms of Myla. Myla out the Gill. Gill playing down the far touch line. So much space for Simmons. Miller comes across. Steps away from one. Pushes another one off. Comes back inside from the touch line. And eventually he's knocked to the ground. Two minutes over the halfway line in Australian territory. Beautiful run by Gill. Wally Lewis missed him. And there's a penalty to Great Britain. Hanging on to the man and the play the ball. So Great Britain using the ball to do the work. Hitting the ball out wide. And it was Henderson Gill making a brilliant run on the left hand touch line. And of course he's the player that Australian fans know well. He played with South Sydney last season. An excitement machine. So Great Britain now putting pressure on Australia. Only five minutes into the test match at Old Trafford. Nil all between Australia and Great Britain. Now he's coming up for this tap kick. It's David Watkinson with the tap. He gives it straight back into the arms now. Charging down the field. Good run by Kevin Ward. Pulled down eight metres out from the Australian line. It's played back to Gill. Out to Derek Fox. Good pass now. Out to Lee Crook. Oh, he throws a shocker. And here, uh, Hanley now in possession of the football. He pulls him down. 24 metres out from the Australian goal line. It's played back now to Leiden. Across the Fox. A good switch straight back in to the arms of Potter. Potter now pulled down centre field on the Australian quarter line. A quick play of the board. He goes across the Fox. He turns it back to Lee Crook once again. Charging into the Australian defence. And eventually he'll be pulled down. But he's going to call a player out now. Gee whiz, they're not pussy cat. What's he going to do? You want him to kiss him or something? Yeah, Steve Rake's been called out now. And a good strong run there by Lee Crook. And the Crooks, of course, well known to the Australian. He's a great chance for Great Britain to take first points here in the first rugby league test match. And it's going to be the man himself, the man that was in possession of the football, Lee Crooks, the second row forward for Great Britain, who had this shot at goal from right on the quarter line, around 10 metres in from the sideline. So a pretty easy kick here for Lee Crooks. He's got the wind behind him. And an almighty roar will go up here at Old Trafford. Greg, I like the look of this. Great Britain side, they're very keen, they're fitter than any Great Britain side we've seen in the last six or seven years. They look good, they're running onto the football, they're certainly not overawed by this Australian side, and Australia with a real test match on their hands here at Old Trafford. Yeah, at this stage it appears that way, but uh, Australia haven't had the football yet, we've just got to wait to give them a chance to cut loose. This fellow can kick, we've watched him plenty of times in Australia. Lee Crooks, he's on the Australian quarter line some 12 metres in from the touch on the far side and uh, it shouldn't be any effort for this fellow to put this one over he's had a couple of chances to uh, to set it up I'm just uh, I can't wait to see the Australians get hold of this leather because uh, I think they'll, uh, they'll cut loose this Great Britain side I wonder what struck them Crooks now around the corner style 
as I said, 12 metres in from the touch as he comes in now. He hits it beautifully, it's got height, and it's got... Wave the way, wave the way since the touch, judges. So we're back to the corner now for the drop 22. OK, well, there was a great opportunity for Great Britain to take an early lead in the test match, but it remains nil all Great Britain and Australia after six and a half minutes of play here at Old Trafford. There's the restart of play, and the Australians moving through. Oh. A beautiful tackle by Peter Sterling. Brings down the, the Great Britain forward. Goes across now out for Derek Fox. Good pass to Crook out the field house. And on the mile, the traffic got popped it up. And if we take it by now, flash that wheel. First time the Aussies have had the ball. Showed a bit of pace to the crusher. But over the tuck line, some 16 metres out from the English goal line. Yeah, good tackle too by Lee Crook. She's got to lead this English pack. He's been in the Great Britain side since she was 18 years of age. A former schoolboy and under-18 international. As I said, well-known in Australia through his play with Western Suburbs. Scrum collapsing, second row feed there. And uh, it's Australia now with the penalty just inside the Great Britain quarter. Penalties in the Test match so far. Three to Great Britain, two to Australia. And the scrums are one all. There's the uh, kick for the sideline and Australia restart play. Here they are in a dangerous position now. Only 19 metres out. Absolutely. On to Wally Lewis. Good pass on the Dowling charging forward. But good solid defence by the Brits to put him down. He'll get up the play once again. Back it goes to Simmons to Lewis. Simmons on the wrap around. Oh, had Linda coming through. Flicked out the back side and Sterling one pass across to Kenny. Across the mic and But he's taken by Martin. He's put to the ground. Yeah, touch judges in. And uh, this is against the... Uh yeah, the tuck judge is in, he's pushing players away. Michael O'Connor was the player that uh, received a little bit of... How you, how's your father from Ellery Hanley? These tuck Ellery... judges feet are the same as the one in Australia. Uh, these, are, these aren't up for Bengal Lancers, these are their pommy cousins. But they'll certainly come in too, whenever they see fit. But uh, he certainly knows that uh, this game, live on television, live throughout Britain and Australia, and uh, he's got in for his two bobs worth early. There's a penalty to Australia. Lewis finds touch now. Only 15 metres out from the Great Britain goal line. Nil all between Australia and England. Across the Sterling to Lewis. Back now into the arms of Big Roach. And Roach now is pulled to the ground. He'll get up and play the ball. Once again, back to Simmons. He goes across to Lewis. Doing a good pass on there to the big Pollock field. Charging through. The Great Britain defence all over the top of him like an octopus foot as he docks to the round. He'll get up to play the ball. It'll be a penalty. And back to Simmons. He takes off. Simmons is going. Oh, he's just short of the... British goal line and pull down over the top by Andy Goodway and company. He plays it back to Cleal, a long pass across the hour. It goes to Sterling, he turns, tries to go on his own. Oh, David Watson tripped one in there. He'll get up and play the ball, 10 metres out. Goes across now to Simmons, out to Lewis, a long cut out pass to Kenny, holds it up, beautiful for Gene Miles. Good Australia, beautiful pass by Brett Kenny. How easy was that? Australia lead by 4 to nil. And the Kangaroos draw first blood here at Old Trafford. And I've got to admit, Greg, that was awfully easy down there. Now, sideline eye, John Harker, superb pass from Brett Kenny. It certainly was a great pass. Brett Kenny summed up the situation extremely well, Dorf. What happened was that uh, the, the Poms are so keen on moving up quickly that they just came up too quickly. They left their men. We're seeing the replay now, and here it comes across. The first pass from Lewis was a good one to Kenny. He cut out two men, and then uh, all Kenny had to do was pop the short ball because uh, four players had moved up hoping to get Brett Kenny. They didn't see Gene Miles, though. They've got to move up in a straight line. If they keep moving up like that, then Australia are going to cut them to ribbons. This is a front-on view here, and here goes Gene Miles. He had no one to beat because four players had come inside to get Brett Kenny. Now, they can't afford to do that. They're looking good with the ball, Great Britain. They're keen to play it out in the back. But they can't afford to come up in, in twos and threes. They've got to come up in a straight line and come up together and be committed. Michael O'Connor now, 18 metres out, 20 in from the touch line. Got it on, waved away, no goal to Australia. After nine and a half minutes of play at Old Trafford, it's Australia 4 leading Great Britain nil. A try to Gene Miles, a beautiful pass from Brett Kenny and Australia draw first blood in the test match. Well, Great Britain so far, Greg, they look pretty good with the football, but uh, that old plasticine defence that the Poms have revealed in uh, recent years still looks evident there. So uh, let's see if this Pommy side has improved their defence. Uh, back to the halfway, Derek Fox getting the game underway. I don't think they can tackle. I don't think they can tackle their old uh, grandmother. Nevertheless, oh, the frames of that, that go dead. So we're back to the quarter. Well, 
they're a very keen, fit-looking side. If they can, uh, if they can defend, they can be right in this Test match. But Australia, that try looked awfully easy. But four to nil. Here's a chance for Great Britain. Drop out by Australia's uh, Wally Lewis. Now into the hands of Hanley for Great Britain. Yes, and he's going to be put down too. Lewis coming in over the top, and the referee says everything is a OK. Australia have stolen possession of the football, 28 metres out from their own line. If they get off him, allow him to play the ball. He's up now, Miles. Plays it back to O'Connor. He tries to get away from one, but he's finished off over the top. Solid defence by Hanley around the leg. He'll play the ball. Crooks was over the top. It's gone now. Back to... Uh, the big fella needling charging forward and a good solid hit by Phil House who was first man in. He'll try to get up and play it once again. It goes across now. The Roach charging up towards the halfway line. He just pushes one off. He starts to go again. There's the football wide. Out for needling and Phil House pulls him down some 40 metres out from the English goal line. Peter Simmons out for Sterling to Cleal. The ball is dropped down and he tries to regain it. He's knocked it on, but gee, I thought he was going to get up and bolt for that. Yeah, Gary Schofield going for the intercept and uh, not being able to take the football. And uh, Strum will go down. Australia's speed just a few metres on the Great Britain side of halfway. Australia 4 lead Great Britain nil at Old Trafford. Yeah, In they go out. like two rampaging sets of bulls here. Two big packs of forwards. Australia's front rowers so far today. Greg Dowling and Stephen Roach playing big game for Australia. Come off the mark and Mr. Rastignaras blows his whistle and uh, it's a penalty to Australia. Lewis will kick into the breeze and the Australians now talking amongst themselves. They'll have a move on here. Probably settle the play down. Work towards the Great Britain post. Sideline eye, John Harker, the forward, moving pretty well early in the game. They are moving very, very well. Look for Noel Quill not running on the blind side. He's setting himself now. He's going to come from the deep. Okay, Australia now on the attack. Simmons, good pass out the road. Goes it back to Lewis. Lewis nearly through the gap and nearly over again for Australia. Eight metres out from the English line. They get up to play it back to Roy Simmons. He dummies, turns it back to Cleal. Cleal charging forward, just like Johnny Harker said, but still short of the Great Britain line. They get up to play the ball. The referee forced to come in over the Rockets. Back with Simmons. Good pass across to Sterling. Out once again to Gene Miles. He tries to offload the ball. He does. He gets it away. But it's picked up. Those kids misses the ball. Oh, hey, has got hold of them by the scruff of the neck. Pulling him back. That's illegal interference. And he hasn't even seen it. Well, Greg, he's calling someone out. I think he has picked it up. And referee Raskin Nara is uh, uh, gesticulating there. Well, it was there. Hanley, Peter, yeah. that was doing the pulling. Yeah, OK. Well, he's pulling out Tony Myler, the 5'8". And uh, this should be another penalty to Australia. Also, the captain has been called up. And uh, that is David Watkinson. He's there to listen to the powwow. So is it going to be a penalty or a scrum? No, it's a scrum. The forwards are uh, forming a scrum. And a scrum to go down now. 22 metres out from the Great Britain goal line. Australia four. Lee Great Britain nil. Scrum to Great Britain. And Fox has run away from the base of the scrum. But Peter Sterling is opposite. Has put him down. Decker Watkinson. Watkinson across now to Crook. Good pass on to Myler. Oh, and then coming up into the line was Andy Goodway. He's got the football on in Australia again. In possession inside the Great Britain quarter line. Oh, then he gets up to play the ball. They won't let him go. Greg Kenny with a knee and uh, the touch touch from the far side of the ground has come in. Goes across the Sterling, out the Lewis, back into the arms of Phil House, but he's off to the ground. And the touch touch standing there like a statue in Hyde Park with a flag on it. And he's calling out Greg Kenny, it'll be. Kenny in possession of the football. Now, Mr. Rastignara must have seen that. The crowd let up a fellow, and it was a, a knee there from Brett Kenny. He was in possession of the football. Kenny, not a dirty player, trying to free himself. And uh, the touch judge, he lit streak. He's the slowest touch judge I've ever seen. He's taken 30 seconds to get off the field. OK, that's kick now. Line stuck to the Australian territory, four metres over the halfway line. Well, they've produced a limping Bengal Lancer. Never thought I'd see it. Nor did I. Fox now to take the tap. He's on the pension, that touch judge. And he's having a look now. Ruskinara's going back to 10 metres to make sure the Australians have a straight line. He taps it now, goes across to Watkinson, straight out to Brooks. Fox on the wraparound. He bounces off one. The fastest he's ever moved to. Somebody must have given him an injection. He'll get up to play the ball up over the halfway line. Back to Watkinson, goes across now to Crook. Good pass to Andy, good way out the field. House, he's put the football down, and Kenny dives on it. Taken over the top by Schofield. He'll get up to play the ball five metres over the halfway line. Back to Miles, loses his footing, and again he's claimed by Schofield. To play the ball back to Simmons. A cutout pass goes across to Sterling. Good pass now out to Kent. He's been hit into the arms of Fox, and Fox now 
is knocked to the ground up over the halfway line. Well played by Australia. They're not showing any commitment to the football. They've got to get their mind on the job. They're a little bit unsettled out there. A few of the Australian players, Kenny, and uh, a few of the others showing uh, a few signs here of being affected by this Great Britain side. But Australia lead by four points to nil. Great Britain in possession now. Four metres on the Australian side of halfway. A kick through. Picked up by Michael O'Connor. And he's put his foot on the sideline. He is a dude, that bloke. He's red on. He's, if he wasn't about seven or eight to ten inches inside that touch line, I'd scrub this joint with a toothbrush. Well, the touch judge has ruled that uh, he's put his foot on the sideline. And Rasgigna is now talking to the touch judge. He's probably saying to him, do you need a guide dog? Now the scrum about to go down. Flags up. He's telling him what to do now. You can't tell me what to do. You just stick your flag up. Some of that air under the armpits there, boy. You won't need the cousin's imperial letter. And they finally now to the Australian side, 10 metres out from the Aussie goal line. Well, we've had exactly, in the first half now, we've had the scrums 4-2, four, 4 all in the scrums. Great Britain 4, Australia 4. The penalties are 2-1 in favour of England. Now that ball has found touch on the Australian quarter line. Roy Simmons to take the tap, he does so, gives it back to Dowling, charging forward. Bounces off Thiel House, but eventually he's taken over the top by Ward. And Watkinson, he gets up to play the ball back, but Simmons goes across the ropes. Race has got his legs cut from under him in a beautiful tackle by Ian Potter. He'll play the ball, 30 out from his own line. Back to Simmons, across to Lewis. Lewis now kicks downfield, nobody's at home. Joe Lydon going across to get it. But I think the football's going to beat Lydon to the touch line. Oh, Henderson Gill's there too. Pick up for it, and he raises up, but he's going to be decked just before he gets to his own quarter line by Peter Sterling over the top. Now it's played straight back in the arms of Lydon. He had a look for support, not available, not down on his own quarter line. Over the top by Miles. Play back to Watkinson, goes across to Derek Fox, out to Myler. Good pass to Hanley. Hanley then gives another one. Straight out for Schofield, makes a good break. No old clear over the top to pull him down. 35 out from the Britain line. Well, Great Britain growing in confidence. They're moving the ball well. There is a problem in their defence, but uh, they're spreading the ball well. Good pass there from Lee Crook. Out wide. Ball gone back inside. Picked up well. Now by the Great Britain 5 8 Tony Myler. And Australia in a test match here. They lead by four points to nil here at Old Trafford. Australia yeah. four, Great Britain nil. Lee, Lee Crook kick downfield. Yeah, and a good kick too, but beautifully taken by Gary Jack. Jimmy Jack let's get up to go again. He's come down 22 metres. He's not going to knock off the defence. No fouls around his face, but eventually he's put to the ground. Just wondering whether the referee is going to let him continue to hold on, but he won't. As it's played now, straight back to Michael O'Connor, up over the halfway line. Phil Howes combining with David Watkinson to pull him down. Halfway through the first half at Old Trafford, Australia 4, Great Britain 0. The scrums are 2 to 1 in favour of England, but the penalties are Australia 5, Great Britain 4. Oh, beautifully taking that good ball. He gets up the flat, back to Simmons. Dummy decides to go on his own. And he's pulled down by Lee Crook. They've got to settle this play down a little bit, Australia. Their uh, forwards aren't working as a pack. Here's Sterling now getting uh, the lock forward for Australia. Bobby Lynn uh, running off him, and that's the type of play that Australia needs. They need the football for six. Here's Sterling putting the ball down there. Oh, and a good kick to out for that ball. That's a short the... dead ball line, Greg. It sure is. Peter's probably will be lucky to be six metres or less than that. Yeah, well, yards, I should say. There's no way that it is. And uh, it's a very tiny in-goal area, and Sterling didn't read it well there. John Harker, sideline eye, that is a minute in-goal area. It certainly is. That's a very old play of Peter Sterling. He does it very well for Parramatta, but this in-goal area will make it tough. He was trying to stop the ball and then catch the foot, the fullback, of course, in the in-goal. But uh, this is the first time a test match has been played here, and I'd like to have a look at that. I don't think it'll be uh, quite long enough. OK, there's a kick by Lee Foot downfield, but using the wind, and it sails well out on the full. So Australia now with a good opportunity to do attack inside the Great Britain quarter. The scrum will go down now. Referee Raskidna has ruled the scrum to go down. The scrum's in the game so far. Two to one to Great Britain. He's walking all over the place. And, uh, Lee Crook, he must have had his Kellogg's this morning because that ball went way over the touchline up into the crowd. Now this scrum's still not happy with it. The referee trying to straighten it up. Sterling comes up to work for Australia. One by Australia. Straight out to Wally Jimmy Jack comes from the back end of the attack, but eventually he's knocked down six tackles. Rule gets up to play the ball. Back to Lewis, goes across now into the arms of Sterling. And out for Simmons. Simmons all wrapped up with nowhere to go. Well, they're flat footed there, Australia. Not lining 
Heath at all. Nobody running onto the football. And playing right into this English defence. Here's a pass by Sterling to Lewis. Oh, back to Miles. Miles has got him in on the outside. He gets a pass out for Michael O'Connor. He comes in. And another try to Australia. Yeah, good try to Australia. Michael O'Connor scored. Wally Lewis combining with Gene Miles. And Michael O'Connor has gone in and scored Australia's second try. So Australia lead by eight points to nil. And that was the Queensland combination there of Gene Miles and Wally Lewis. 21 minutes gone in the test match. And Australia now lead by eight to nil. And this Australian side, if they can settle down and use the football to do the work, will most certainly rack up a big score in this test match. Good try, John Harker. Wally Lewis threw two to him, popped the pass back inside, and with the two players going down with Wally, it was simple a case of Gene Miles stepping around, giving the ball to uh, Michael O'Connor, but not the greatest defensive ever, ever seen from Tony Martin either. Lewis, it was a great pass, really was he. He pushed the pass on impact on, on the tackle, that's why he was managed to suck two players to him, and then O'Connor, a good step, but Martin really should have been able to put him over the line. OK, so here's the kick for the uh, conversion by Michael O'Connor. 18 metres out now, 2 metres in from the touchline, a very difficult angle for Michael O'Connor, and we've seen this fella put him over before, there she goes now, and a little away, no goal to Australia once again. Yes, well he's kicking into that very strong wind, and O'Connor didn't look like getting the distance, but tries in the ninth minute to Australia's Gene Miles, and in the 21st minute to Michael O'Connor, have Australia 4, leading Australia 8, leading Great Britain nil here at Old Trafford in the first rugby league test. Great Britain using the ball well, but crumbling under pressure in defence. There's the restart of play by Lee Crook. Well picked up now by the Australian centre three-quarter, Gene Miles, the man instrumental in that last try scored by Michael O'Connor. Back down to Wally Lewis, charging forward. Andy Goodwatt over the top to knock him down. He'll get up to play the ball. Back into the arms of Roy Simmons. Crooks is also involved in the tackle. Sterling, good pass then. Straight out now to, to um, Niebling. And Niebling knocked to the ground 32 metres out from the Aussie goal line. Again, it goes across into the arms. The big fella Roach charging down towards the centre of the ground. And over the top came Fieldhouse, 40 metres out from the line. Across to Simmons, out to Peter Sterling. Again dropping it off the end of the toe. And going across now is Leighton, picking it up at his own quarter line. Plenty of defence down there, in particular Sterling. But he's knocked down beautifully right around the legs by Bob Linder. He'll get up the flat now. Back to Gill, a long pass, picks up Fox inside. It goes to Andy Goodway, but he's got his leg shot from under him. Caught inside his own quarter line. Well, this uh, Great Britain side have got to start using this wind. It's an eight-point wind. They've got the advantage of it, but they're eight points behind. Australia eight, lead Great Britain nil. And uh, Great Britain now, their condition starting to tell a little bit. They looked impressive early in the game. Fieldhouse is knocked on. Oh. And Australia's Bobby Linder has picked the ball up. Here's Australia in a good position. An easy yardage there from dummy half by big Gene Miles. He'll get up to play the ball. Back to clearly. He might go on his own now. He offloads it out for Sterling. Sterling chips over the top. Well, it's going through. Oh, what a... It's a penalty kick. It's got to be a penalty kick. What's he going to do? Yeah, it's a trip, I think. Yeah, he's oh, the penalty. Handley just dropped him. It was Wally Lewis going through after the football there. And uh, that kick would have gone out the back door. But a trip there by one of the Great Britain players. Uh, Hanley. Hanley it was. And a penalty to Australia within fairly easy kicking distance for Michael O'Connor. O'Connor none from two in conversion. And that kick from Sterling certainly, uh, I think, would have gone out the back door anyway. Sideline eye, John Harker. Henderson Gill had that kick covered. Uh, it probably would have kept going, but Gill filled it easily. And uh, Lewis was actually tripped by Andy Goodway. But the one thing I can't understand is why is Great Britain, with this win, insisting on spinning the ball in their own 22 and trying to run the length of the field? Why don't they kick it up the field? I can't understand it. Obviously, they're acting under instructions, but you would have thought that you'd see uh, the kickers in the team like Fox putting the boot to the ball early. Yeah, most certainly Australia will use the wind in the second half, and Great Britain not using the wind, and they're paying for it right at this moment. Here's Michael O'Connor. Can he put Australia 10 points up? 15 metres out from the crossbar. O'Connor in the ball time. He's got that two points, Michael O'Connor. Good kick. Australia 10 leaves Great Britain nil at Old Trafford. So Australia 10 leaves Great Britain nil, and we've had exactly now 
25 minutes of the first half. Australia 10 lead Great Britain nil. Tries to Michael O'Connor and Gene Miles. And O'Connor now has kicked one goal from three attempts. So Australia 10 lead Great Britain nil at Old Trafford. Restarted play by Derek Fox. A high kick allowed to bounce, but picked up now by Michael O'Connor for Australia. Yeah, beats the first line on the fence and uh, eventually was knocked down. Martin was the man he got through, but he can't beat Schofield. Now he's up to play the ball. Goes now across the Linda into the arms of Rick Dowling. Up over his own quarter line and again pull down and a good tackle. He plays the ball back to Simmons. Given out now. Oh, going forward in a very Brian strong Neibling, good strong yes, one by Neebling. Ross Neebling. He'll get up to play the ball after Fieldhouse puts him down. It's back to Simmons. Goes across into the arms of Sterling. Then beautifully on to Lewis. And Lewis again is beneath his sweetie Sue. Oh, it's bounced favorably for the Australians. Very hard to tell from this side of the ground. But I thought it was out on the full feeder. Yes, yeah, so did I, Greg. It looked an awful kick from Wally ah. Lewis. It, it almost blew back from uh, from whence it came. But uh, it took a freakish bounce. Uh, the winger on the far side, Henderson Gill, wasn't prepared to uh, make an attempt at it. It was very close to the sideline. And the old pensioner with a flag over there <laughs> put his flag up. He just happened to be right on the spot. Oh, and a strong win now to Great Britain. Gill picks it up. Oh, just dummy still. I thought to box, but decides to go on his own. Eventually pulled down just short of the halfway line. The rain coming down here at Old Trafford now, and Great Britain doing it tough against this Australian defence. It actually lost ground now. Light pulls out of a tackle, but uh, he's caught from behind, and uh, it was Wally Lewis, the man that did the damage. Plays it back to Hanley. Hanley now passes out to Fox. Dummy tries to go on his own. He's picked up, tried to stand it off mode, and eventually he's knocked on the ground by three miles. Now light in the dummy half. Looking for a ball carrier. No, he decides to go on his own. Kicks downfield. Jack going across. He's going to watch it trickle over. So they get to feed the Australian some 16, 18 metres out from the Australian goal line. Well, certainly Great Britain now starting to use the wind. And they've really got to be revved up now and try and get a try on the board before half time. Australia 10 lead Great Britain nil as the rain tumbles down here at a very cold Old Trafford in Manchester. Australia 10 lead Great Britain nil. Sterling to feed the ball for Australia, 18 metres out from the Kangaroos goal line, the second row feed against Sterling, and a penalty by Julian Rastignara, so the Ponds with a chance now to put some pressure on Australia, what to, oh, they're going to have a committee meeting before they decide what to do. Well I'll tell you what, uh, Sterling could never have gotten that ball in there, but there's the touch finder by Schofield, 10 metres out now, the best chance the Ponds have had for a while, Fox coming up to take the tap for Great Britain, he does so, is it across to Watkinson, out the crook, he turns it back to Fieldhouse, straightens up the attack, gives it back to Crook, and Crook to scramble like two eggs I had, that's more of a breakfast by Noel Cleal, he gets up, back to Watkinson, across the box, to pass the ward, charging forward again, solid to Ozzie Sackling, knocks him to the ground, over the top game, Wally Lewis, and around the legs was Bobby Linder, the Queensland connection, he got the play to Watkinson, goes across the box, good pass out to Amara, the ball, there's a cross, the box, out the lead, Brooks holds a pass up for Hanley, Hanley couldn't step away from the defensive three miles, right around the boot laces, to knock him down inside the Australian quarter line, Schofield, across now to box, tips up over the top, the wrong arm to the referee, Michael O'Connor's up there, beautifully taking the football, breaking it dead, so we've got a goal line drop out. Yes, of course, the international rules are flying here in this uh, international rugby league game at Old Trafford in Sydney football. That would be a tap from the corner following the uh, take behind his in-goal area by the wing three-quarter for Australia, Michael O'Connor. But international rules are playing, and this will be a line dropout. So, good play by Great Britain, and the line dropout now by Wally Lewis for Australia. Good pressure there, good attacking play from the Great Britain side. An awful dropout by the Australian. It's into the hands of Hanley. particular Wally Lewis to get up the play up now back to Watkinson from Hulkaya straight out now to Fox then on to Ward a big strong strapping lad charging forward but knocked down over the Australian quarter line he lost the ball Australia in possession so Great Britain with a good opportunity there to keep the pressure on Australia 
and now they've been caught inside the five by referee Rastignaris. So the pressure off for Australia. They're going to try and hang on. This 10-point lead is a good one in the conditions here that prevail at Old Trafford. And if Australia go in at half-time with a 10 points to nil lead, running into this very strong wind, the goalposts here are actually, actually rocking with the wind here at Old Trafford. And uh, there's the touch finder for Australia. A good kick to finding touch. 10 metres in to the Great Britain side of the halfway mark. So, Australia 10, lead Great Britain 0, and up goes the front row forward for Australia, Greg Dowling. We've had 30 minutes of play, the scrums of 3-2 to England, and the penalty 7-5 to Australia. Roach in position just outside the English quarter line. He gets up the flat. Back to Simmons again, goes across to Sterling, good pass out to Cleo, Cleo now offloads another bad pass and uh, Great Britain rush through, but it's not back, the referee says, play on, back to Linda, he offloads to Simmons, out to Sterling to Lewis, Lewis ducks under one, starts his run, turns it back inside, and uh, the Australians are pulled down, Linda it is, Bob Linda, he gets up to play the ball, back it goes to Simmons, across now to Sterling, good pass out to Kitty, a cut out past the ball, he pins his hand back, gives it back there to Again, it was Gene Lyle who strode through the gap every time Australia get the ball out wide. They're looking dangerous, and these hobbies are certainly very weak on the left-hand side of the field. Tony Marchant, very plasticine defence, and uh, he's having problems handling the, handling the big Australian back every time Australia go to the left, and they've scored two of their three tries there. They're looking dangerous. So Australia, 14 to nil with his second try, Michael O'Connor, the... Former St George, centre three quarter, now centre four Manly Warringah, and Australia lead by 14 to nil. And uh, the time ticking away in the first half now. That try coming in the 32nd minute, and Australia very good on that left hand side of the field, John Harker. They certainly are, but you can mark that try down to Gary Schofield. He came up far too fast, and uh, it was a simple case again of Brett Kenny popping a pass to uh, Gene Miles, who was in the clear. Schofield, that's twice now he's come up too far from Great Britain can't afford it. Here's the kick. Oh, it's gone well away to the left-hand side, John. No goal, but the way they're scoring tries and at ease. They're like Muhammad Ali. Anytime they want to knock them out of business, they do just that. There yeah, they certainly are. It's uh, three tries to nil to Australia. And the Australian back, John Harker, certainly creating havoc. It's that centre combination of Gene Miles and Brett Kenny, and they're certainly giving their wingers good support. Well, they saw uh, Michael O'Connor sit there to catch the ball then and run. You couldn't put that try down to uh, March, and he did all he could come in, coming in and getting uh, Miles, but he didn't have the numbers. It was one on two. As I've said a, a hundred times before, if Great Britain don't come up in a straight line, then players of the calibre of Kenny and Miles are going to cut them to pieces, and that's just what's happening. I'm sure that they're going to get a right bollocking when they go into the dressing room at half time. OK, Michael O'Connor in position for Australia after Linda has taken the kick-off, and it's Australia 14, leading Great Britain nil. Getting up the flat now, Michael O'Connor, back to Roy Simmons, out now to Neebling charging through on a strong burst, but he's pulled down over the top by Watkins. He'll get up to play, and Potter also involved. Back it goes to Simmons, out to Greg Dowling now. Tries to get away from Lee Crooks and Phil House, but again, he's put to the ground, 40 metres out, centre field from his own goal line. Simmons across to Peter Sterling. Peter Sterling now getting his kick down, Leiden going across, knocks the ball back, the referee says... so sure, Greg. I'm oh, turn it up. You're not that blind. I know he was facing his goal line, but to my mind, it uh, it went forward, and uh, Australia taking the strum now, only 23 metres out from the Great Britain goal line, and Lighton under a bit of pressure has certainly been a bit uh, a bit wonky on there. Strum win to Australia, and uh, Peter Sterling's got the football. He plays the ball now to Brett Kenny. Kenny up to Gary Jack. And Jack now good on the far side. He'll be knocked down over the top by Lee Crooks. Coming in now to the dummy half position once again is Gene Miles, a much, much thinner Gene Miles than I saw on my last uh, game with him playing. It goes to Simmons, good pass out to Dowling again, and he wants to get on with the hard stuff as he charges forward. Well and truly inside the Great Britain quarter now. Roy Simmons, oh, here it comes. Dowling was on the ground, he wanted to take the 
take the ball up and uh, the both touch judges are in, the action is in there and even uh, the uh, the guy from our side of the field, the grandstand side of the field, he's waving his arms around. <laughs> like patting a, everyone on the back. Yeah, he's patting everybody on the back and he looks like a, a frustrated traffic cop on the corner of Paul George. Oh, I've got 10 minutes here, Peter. Yeah, uh, let's see what Lee happens. Lee Crook. Lee Crook's just 10 minutes in the sit bed. For the knee. For knees and Rusty knows that Lee Crook has got life membership to sit bed. He's been there plenty, plenty of times before and this will be a penalty to Australia. So Great Britain getting frustrated with that 14-0 scoreline. Sideline eye, John Harker. Yeah, 10 minutes in the sit bed for Lee Crook. As you know, you'll certainly know the way, Lee. That was a bit of stupidity. He was... Uh, well, shall we say, uh, niggled by Roy Simmons. Roy certainly started what happened there, but uh, Lee dropped in the knee, and that's it. He's into the sin bin, and that's a, a huge blow. I don't think they're going to come back to this. In fact, Lee has only just pushed past me then. He, uh, he didn't look too happy on the way. OK, so Lee crooks in the sin bin. John, some of the Australian forwards, Noel Cleal, particularly tonight or today, I expected him to uh, have a more, more of an effect on this game. I expected him to be charging onto the blind side, but both he and Brian Neebling leaving the work to the front row particularly Dowling and Roach to do the work. Well, Peter, I don't think Noel Cleal's been running deep enough. If you uh, watch him uh, in back play when he hasn't got the ball, he's, when he is trying to make his runs, he's coming from very shallow. Okay, we all know flat. that when Noel's better, he's coming from the deep. But here's Michael O'Connor with the kick. 18 metres out. 20 metres in from the touch run on the far side here at Old Trafford. Michael O'Connor got the leather up, got the distance, got the goal. Well, that's a great goal in the circumstances, Greg. That's into an almost sure gale-force win now here at Old Trafford. 35 minutes gone, and Michael O'Connor has made it two out of five today. He's certainly having a field day. He's scored two tries for Australia and two penalty goals. So, ten points to Michael O'Connor in his debut test match in Great Britain. So, the Michael O'Connor, a great start to him in international football in Great Britain. Australia now... 16 points to nil over Great Britain and Lee Crooks in the sin bin. Jerry Jack now right underneath that bomb, that uh, commencement of play, taking it beautifully, brings the ball nearly up to his own quarter, bounces off one. You can't tackle any better than that board, you may as well not be there. He'll play the ball now, Potter all over him too, like a rash. It goes to Simmons, uh, out now to Stephen Roach. Oh, gee, and Andy Goodway came in there. And I tell you what, the referee, he had Goodway. He had him. No risk in the world, the high tackle. Aaron Molly Lewis calming the Australians down. Like a rake wants to go on with him. Andy Goodway, well known in Australia too, had a short sit there with Manly Warringah. And Goodway and the Great Britain side now getting totally frustrated. They've got a gale behind them and they trail by 16 points to nil a few minutes out from half time. And uh, they could give the baseball back to the Spain and they wouldn't beat the Australians. Australia lead by 16 to nil. Lewis has got to keep his side behind on the job and Australia will race away with this football game. They've got the gale in the second half and they should go right on with it. So, a few minutes remaining in the first half. Australia 16, Lee Great Britain nil and Dowling takes it up like a steam train. Up over the halfway line, Dowling. He'll get up to play the ball. Back now it goes to Simmons. Good pass then on to Roach. Roach charging forward. He's going to be upended by Phil House and company. Eight metres over his own side of the halfway line. He gets up to play it again. Back to Simmons. Tries the dummy. But again, he's going to be knocked to the ground. He's going nowhere. Phil House over the top. Eventually pulling him down. I want to see some of these Australian forwards get involved. Noel Cleal for one. Here he goes from Dunny Half. Cleal now getting the football. Good work, Zorb. You couldn't have read it any better, could you? Get up to play the ball. Goes back now into the arms of Simmons. Straight out now to Sterling. Good pass on to Linda charging forward. Up towards the Great Britain quarter line. But again, he's knocked down over the top by Potter and Watkinson. And Blaney goes out now to Sterling in front. He's putting a hole. It'll hang there. That's a great... Oh, Kenny's back there. It's been knocked back. No, it's been knocked forward. Miles picks it up a little. He's just going to die over. Couldn't find out what Rastanaris was going to do. Well, you wouldn't know what he's going to do. I can tell you what, I hate to be getting letters from him when he's delivering round there at Cotillion. But that was a good kick by Sterling. It hung up there in the wind, and the Australians read it well. Rearranged there, Kenny went for it, but uh, it was a knock-on detected by Rastignaris. The rain tumbles down. Australia with a big push. Great oh. with the scrum, but they're forced behind their own goal line. There's half-time. Australia lead by 16 points to nil. Tries in the first half, two to Michael O'Connor, and one to Gene Miles. 
two goals from five attempts to Michael O'Connor. The scrums in the first half uh, favour the Australian, favour the Great Britain side by four to three, and the penalty favour Australia by eight to five. So that penalty count of eight to five to Australia, very significant in the first half. Australia scored tries to Gene Miles in the ninth minute, in the 21st minute to Michael O'Connor, and in the 32nd minute to Michael O'Connor. O'Connor converted the try scored in the 21st minute by himself, and he also kicked a penalty goal five minutes from half time. Sideline eye John Harker, this Australian side has certainly done well in the first half, making the most of their opportunities, using that penalty count, and Great Britain not using that gale wind in the first half. Well, that's right. Australia have taken every chance that's been offered to them, uh, Zorba, but I think you've hit the nail on the head there where you said that Great Britain haven't used the win. I can't understand why they insisted on trying. From there, he thinks they can go right on with this as long as they don't lose concentration because, of course, Great Britain will be out to get points early, get their, their uh, backsides up and maybe get back into the game. I think it's impossible, but uh, we'll see what happens. OK, Australia in possession now from the kickoff, and let's see how long it takes. That's two tackles. I don't think we'll wait too long to put the ball right downfield. Simmons, good pass now, straight back to Sterling, and uh, as Peter just said, there's the ball. Henderson Gill getting back there, hasn't got the best of hands, but now picks up inside his own quarter line, turns around, pushes one off, but then Cleo comes in over the top to knock him down just outside his own quarter line. Gets up to play it. Back to Leiden. Goes across the Fox. Good pass now. Out it goes to Andy Goodway. Pushes Sterling away. Nearly a second one too, but around the legs. He's eventually knocked down inside his own quarter line. He quickly plays the ball. Back to Myler. Giving out the Fox. He's going nowhere as the Australians pour in all over the top of him. He's the slowest half I've ever seen in international football. He runs up and down on the one grade of grass, Derek Fox. Oh. Stuck on by the front row forward, Kevin Ward, and Australia will put the pressure right back on England immediately on the resumption of the second half. A scrum to go down now on the Great Britain quarter. Peter Sterling defeat for Australia. Oh, and the rain coming down now. The referee not happy with it. He's blown his whistle once again to break them up. Having a look, Sterling comes up to work up for Australia. Won by Australia. Sterling has to dive on the loose ball. Gets up. Oh, he's put the pass to Brent Kenny. A wide one out to Gene Miles. He set his things down. Going down the centre of the ground, and he's easily pulled down by Leiden in over the top with Fox around the legs. Plays it back to Simmons. Out to Wally Lewis, and he's got his legs dropped from under him by Joe Leiden. That was the best tackle of the match from the Pommy. Back down to Simmons. You and out now, all straight into the arms of Big Cleo charging through, but he's wrapped up two over the top by Potter. He'll get up and play the ball. Back to Simmons, out for Sterling, a switch back to Gary Jack. And good solid defence once again by Fieldhouse over the top. Potter around the legs. He's up the flat, back to Simmons, goes across now to Sterling. Sterling tips over the top. Martin having a look for the ball. They're all up for it. But now we've got the Great Britain side in position. Gary Schofield. Yeah, two metres out from his own line. He plays it back to Martin. Tries to fend off one and he's dropped five metres out from the England goal line. Over the top, James Dowling. He quickly plays the ball back to Andy Goodway. But a penalty now given to the Englishman some 10 metres out from their own goal line. Well, I had my uh, thoughts about Greg Dowling before this trip, but uh, he's certainly playing very, very well for Australia, leading the way up front with his solid defence and charging onto the football. He's met this uh, English on floor today with fire, and he's certainly come out well on top of the Great Britain front row forwards, Ward and Fieldhouse. Great Britain now, their chance to run into this big gale here at Manchester. The crowd willing them, but I don't think they've got the oh. ability. And uh, a, a penalty to Great Britain now, a reefing of possession by Greg Dowling, and a penalty on the Great Britain quarter. Yeah, Raskinar is standing his ground on that one. I thought it might have been an advantage to Australia, but not the case. Schofield now comes up to take the penalty and kicks for touch on the far side. Oh, it's knocked back. It didn't reach the line. So Australia in possession. That's a vital mistake as we see Gary Jack flying down the sideline on the far side. Leiden comes over the top to knock him down just outside the Great Britain quarter line. Now he gets up the flat. Back to Mike. Oh, that should have been a penalty. Back to Michael O'Connor. It goes inside to Dowling. Dowling up to the Great Britain quarter line before he's knocked to the ground over the top by Goodway. He plays it back to Simmons. Goes across to Sterling. Now to Lewis. Good pass on to Miles. Then out wide. It goes to Bobby Linda charging forward. That's one away. Gives it back to Kenny. Now down to Kiss. Kiss charging towards the line, but he's knocked over the touch line. And a good tackle too by Andy Goodway. Yeah, good cover to Vincent Jackson. He also gave Kissy a bit of a uh, chop in the head there with a the knee. Yeah, well, good, good play 
by Australia too to get the ball to Kiss. He tried to come inside, but a good cover defending tackle there by Andy Goodway. Here comes Lee Crook back onto the field for Great Britain. He goes into the second row. So Australia 16 to nil. That was a half-time score. Oh, and it's going to be oh, Foster's in there looking for the scrum. Should be a penalty for mile outside the Englishman. Nevertheless, he said possession is there. with Julian Rastignaris and the postman from Perpignan pointing the evil finger reminds me of a referee a little referee that used to do it and used to spend a lot of time on his boom and yeah, that penalty found touch just outside the Great Britain quarter line no reaction from that referee Watkinson out to a fox across the crook the field house charging the cross field gaining no yardage whatsoever in fact probably losing a little bit as he's knocked over the ground by miles back to watkinson gives it on to fox fox starts to go down the center of the ground making valuable 10 meters or so and the crowd like that little run from fox now play back oh give it out to ward ward bends up inside his own quarter line he comes in now an easy one for Lee Crook the flags go up the crowd roars two points well you're going to need more than that fellas well it's Australia 16 leading Great Britain 2 at Old Trafford in Manchester in the first rugby league test Australia 16 lead Great Britain 2 and that's Lee Crook's first success from two attempts today so Wally Lewis to restart play for us Australia, Australia 16, lead Great Britain 2 in the first rugby league test, and the Aussies led 16 to nil at half time. But now with action and into the arms of Potter, he lets the ball go back to Henderson Gill, finally picking up the football, coming down. Oh, he's picked up and he's driven into the turf by Big Noel Cleal. He plays it back to Potter from the back of the ruck. He goes across field and he's met with a solid hit too, also over the top, lost possession, picked up now, and the pass. From Roach, back to Bob Linda, goes forward, tries to stay in from touch, but uh, and manages to do so too. Nine metres out from the English goal line. Play back to Les Kiss. Given on a Dowling, charging forward. A solid defence once again. Over the top by David Watson, Watkinson, holding him down in company with Potter. It's back to Simmons. Now out to Sterling. Out to Simmons, picked up. Oh, clearly put the football down. Picked up by Derek Fox. And Sterling comes in around the length to knock him down. Just inside the English quarter line. Using the football, Fox boxing for a penalty, but Rastic Norris has nothing over this time. He's Hanley trying to make the mark and holding it up, but he couldn't slip his pass away as he's up to the ground. Oh. Yes, an English player put down without the football, and it was their front row forward there, Kevin Ward. The Australian player being spoken to now is uh, the winger for Australia. Michael O'Connor. Michael O'Connor putting the front row forward down without the football. So there's the penalty taken by Gary Schofield. And the Englishman now with their tails up. The line of Great Britain now being roared on now by the Great, the great Britain crowd here. And the penalties in the second half are five to nil to Great Britain. So they've been given every opportunity by the postman from Perpignan. Straight now, it goes across the Fox. Out now to Lee Crooks and a long pass over to Myler. Beautifully picked up. Myler gives it back to Phil House. Then on to Crooks. He's put the football down. And Australia come up to claim him. He'll play the ball over his halfway line some eight metres or so. 
Back to Watkinson. Good pass across into the arms of Leiden. Leiden now kicks down for finding touch just outside the Australian quarter line. Well, there's no doubt about it that this flood of penalties in the second half has allowed Great Britain to get their tails up a little bit and uh, register their first points. And uh, we'll go down to our sideline eye, John Harker. Side, Les Kiss has done a shoulder. He looks pretty bad on the sideline, and Malvin Inc is warming up. In fact, I'm sure Les Kiss will be coming off. Coach on Furner stepping across to Malvin Inc now just to give him a last few words of advice. So Les Kiss, unfortunate for him, nearly scored that try, but when he was pushed over the sideline, he landed on the point of his shoulder, and he'll be coming off. OK, so it's Mel Meninga to go into this game for Australia. And there's the sixth penalty in a row to the Great Britain side in the second half. So six penalties in a row to Great Britain in the second half. And that must be worrying the Australian camp right at this moment with Great Britain right on the attack now. Only a few metres out from the Australian goal line. Fox with the tap, gives it to Watkinson, straight out to Lee Crock. Fox on the wraparound, out to Andy Goodwin. A long pass across the crook. Through the gap, tries to hold it up. Turns it back to Schofield. Schofield's away and scores a try for Great Britain. Beautiful pass by Lee Crook. That was a magic pass by Lee Crook. Under Gary Schofield. And Schofield has scored. Great Britain's first try. And ironically, the sun has come through at Manchester. What a magic pass by Lee Crook. Under Gary Schofield. And Great Britain has scored a try. Beautiful try, John Harker. Yes, maybe we all spoke a little bit too soon. Lee Crook doing what we know he can do best. He's shown this for Western Suburbs. He's stuck two defenders to him, and the pass up around the corner. That's a beautiful pass. As Steve Roach came over him, the pass was popped under Steve Roach, and Gary Schofield just had a backup, and away he went. Of course, Schofield is try specialist. Four tries in a game once for Great Britain. Here he is, and now Lee Crook lining up this penalty, which could make it 16 points to eight. Okay, here's the kick and here's Hollywood. 18 metres out, 20 metres in from the touchline. On the far side, Lee Crook comes in. It's a beautiful, it's got height, it's got this. Oh, it's the mark, right and gone back into the field of play. No goal. Bad luck there for Lee Crook. It's 16 points to six in favour of Australia. Over Great Britain, the rain has stopped. And the crowd roaring on this Great Britain side with encouragement now. Australia need to settle down their play a little bit. They've conceded six penalties in the second half. Mal Meninga on for Les Kiss now. And Meninga, very, very experienced player and a great favourite. He's played for St Helens here in Britain last year and was a great point scorer for them. Kick off by Australia. Taken on the boot by Hanley. He makes it up to the quarter line before he's put down by the Australian defence. It's up to play the ball. Goes back to Watkinson. Wants to get out the Fox. On to Andy Goodway. He tries to drop the shoulder and beats the defence of Peter Sterling, but he's dropped down inside his own quarter line by Lewis. He plays the ball back to Watkinson again out the Fox. Fox tries to get going, but he's easy beat for the Australian defence of Stephen Roach. He'll play it once again to Watkinson. And the pass goes way back to Joe Lydon. Tries to get around one. Gets his kick in down. Oh, they're a mile offside, these folks. It's picked up now by Malmeninga. If he's not inside the five yards on a bad judge, and oh, look at him coming all over the top. Oh, he's let that go. Now that's, that's an absolute disgrace. Four players there over Meninga, and he's popped up the ball. And uh, the uh, the winger, Henderson Gill, talking to Meninga. As Great Britain goes into the hands of Crook. He's the danger man. He set up their first try. And Great Britain with this crowd behind them. Coming back at Australia. Australia led 16-0 at half time. It's now 16 points to six in the first test here at Old Trafford. And the sun has come out. I didn't think it existed here. It goes across now to Fox. Then out to Crook. Oh, beautiful hand pass in. On the good way, he gets it out to Joe Lydon. Oh, down the sideline. Gary Jack comes across at him. And he scores. What a brilliant try by Joe Lydon. from the kick through a few moments ago. Great Britain has come back into the test match. 16 points to 10, a 50-metre try by Joe Lydon. Sideline eye, John Harker. Britain Hart 
can't hear us because of the crowd, but a magnificent try, and the crowd roaring on their encouragement. He certainly got plenty of pace, Hartley. Oh, yeah, he's got plenty of pace, all right, Peter, there's no doubt about that. They shouldn't have been in a position such as that. It was disgraceful refereeing up here when four and five players came straight over the top to, uh, to hit Mal Meninga. It just went on and on and on, and then he played the advantage, if you want to call it that. If that had been an Australian, or two or three hits over the top, he'd have pinched him. He's been given instructions, this bloke. Well, 50-metre try by Joe Lyden. 16 to 10, and the kick to come from Lee Crooks. And the cry is going up here. But here we go, here we go. That familiar chance. Here's Crooks. Can he put this one over into this strong wind? Just inside his quarter line. He feet in from touch. Oh, it's a great kick. No, it fell short of the mark. I thought it was just going to scrape over. Well, Great Britain only trailed by 16 points to 10. And a constant roar going up here at Old Trafford now. Great Britain with six penalties in the second half have certainly come right back into this match and two tries in the last five minutes for Great Britain. Sideline eye, John Harker, that was a sensational try. It certainly was a sensational try. I said earlier that Joe Lydon can really scoot when he gets in the clear. He showed that. He outpaced Gary Jack. Gary Jack misjudged uh, Joe Lydon's face there, but what a pass that led to that try from Potter. That was a fantastic pass. It certainly was, and Great Britain putting the ball over the dead ball line, and play will restart with a goal line dropout. So Australia conceding two tries in five minutes, 16 points to 10 at Old Trafford. Australia lead, three tries to two, but tries by Gary Schofield and Joe Lydon. Brilliant tries by Great Britain have put them back in the match. Let's see what Australia can do now. Peter Sterling in possession from the recommencement. Beach one tries to go up to the Great Britain quarter line and pull down beautifully over the top by Lee Crooks. He'll play it now back to Roy Simmons. Gives it to Cleal. Down the blind side he goes. Three defenders there over the top and Crook comes in to finish him off. He'll get up to play the ball. Back it goes into the arms of Simmons. Then out to Roach. Roach tries to offload out the evening but decides to hang on to the ball as he's decked. 18 metres out from the Great Britain goal line. He'll play it back to Simmons. Goes across now to Sterling. Good pass on to Lewis. Lewis straightens up the attack. He's around one. Still going well. He looks. Back to Dean Miles. And Australia has gone over Jason to the right hand up right. What an easy try. What a brilliant try by Australia. Laid on by their captain, Wally Lewis. And Lewis was decked there as he got the ball away. Sensational play by Wally Lewis. What a superb pass to big Gene Miles. And he's gone over for his second try of the game. And decked in back play was Wally Lewis. And the touch judges in. And Rusted is now calling out a great big player. Sideline eye, John Harker. Well, first of all, Wally Lewis has not moved. But what a great player he is. I mean, he had the hand in the first two tries. And great players produced when they need to. He was decked by Joe Lydon as he popped that pass to uh, Gene Moles, and he has not moved. He's being treated now by Larry Britton, and I'm telling you, he hasn't moved an inch, Wally Lewis. Well, it was a superb run, John, and a wonderful pass to Gene Miles. He sent him to the sin bin. And so he should send him for 10. It Joe was a blatant Lydon. head high tackle uh -huh. after the man had passed the ball. Okay, head high tackle, Joe Lydon off the 10, and Wally Lewis, Australia have bounced right back and they needed to. A sensational try to Gene Miles. And Australia now lead by 20 points to 10 with a kick to come. Miles the try, but mark it down to Wally Lewis there. The captain's knock just when Australia looked as though they were flagging under the English onslaught and the blatant penalty count against them. Lewis has stood up like a champion and laid on a superb try for Gene Miles. He's out on his feet, Lewis. I don't think... He can't even stand up. He's, He's on all fours. He'll continue. OK, Michael O'Connor now. Nine metres out, a little away to the left-hand side of the, uh, the upright. And Lewis is up on his feet now, and the ball's fallen off the mound. So we'll see Michael O'Connor and time off called by Raskinaris now. Well, Australia desperately needed some Wally Lewis magic, and he came at the right time, and that should knock the stuffing right out of Great Britain. They were coming back very strongly with two beautiful tries, but Lewis has put on a, an exceptionally good try for Australia. He should kick this one without any trouble. Here's Michael O'Connor now, nine metres out. There you go, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am, for the extra two points. 20 points, 22 points to 10 here at Old Trafford, at Trafford with Australia leading Great Britain. 22 points to 10. Michael O'Connor makes it three from six. He's also scored two tries. 
Gene Miles has scored two tries. So all four Australian tries by the back. The crowd booing Lewis. They're claiming he was acting, but uh, no way he was. Lee Crooks with a very good kickoff across the field, and uh, it's gone into touch now inside the Australian quarter. Australia 22, Lee Great Britain 10. And this scrum now, the go down, beat that inside the Aussie quarter line, and the English pack forming over there. The scrum to be worked by Peter Sterling for Australia. It's packed down and won by Australia. Penalty to Great Britain. Well, I don't know. I've got to be cautious how I communicate. We are uh, doing a live call, but this fellow Fair Dinkum, second row feed. Well, that's the seventh penalty in a row in the second yeah. half. Australia have not got a penalty. So, uh, as they say in racing terms, the riding instructions were obviously handed out at half time. Okay, Fox now to take the tap. He does so. Now to Watsonson to Fieldhouse. Fox on the wraparound. A switch of play to Miler down the blind side. Gives a good pass out to Lee Crook. He's knocked to the ground. Also knocked it on as Raskinaris points out. So the scrum will go down. There's a another flare up, Greg. Uh, they're only pushing and shoving. They're only having a wall with each other. OK. The Canadian three-step or the Manchester three-step. And uh, I think he's sending Steve Roach to the send there. Yes, he has. No, he hasn't. Oh, the the cut judge. The cut. Yeah, he has. Australia have got to settle the football down now. Here's Noel Cleal. He's got to get more involved in the action. He's got to support Dowling now. And Dowling having a great game for Australia. So too is Roy Simmons. As he goes away from the dummy half, Australia lead by 22 to 10. Sideline eye John Harker is reaching the Sinbin or off. Yeah, Sinbin for 10 minutes. He's lost at this referee. Sinbin for a smack in the mouth, and it's about the 40th one in the game from both sides. I can't understand that. You'll see that Neveling will go to the front row. OK, Australia led the penalties in the first half, John, but this is a, an absolute landslide of penalties in the second half for Great Britain, and it certainly, certainly aided them in getting back into the game. Maybe I should have stuck my ear inside the referee's room at half time. Would have been an interesting conversation, I feel. Yes, uh, well, you better brush up on your French, mate. OK, scrum going down, 22 metres out from the Great Britain line. Derek Fox to hold the scrum. The crowd at Old Trafford. 50,583, and that's a record for a test match in Australia, uh, in Great Britain, between Australia and Great Britain. And Australia, what a miracle. His arm's gone up towards Australia, a penalty to Australia. Yeah, it, and it came off the Australian foot, so how in the heck he got the penalty, it's God only knows. But uh, there goes Wally Lewis, fine touch now, 18 metres out from the English goal line with a tap to come. And it's taken Australia 22 minutes of the second half to get a penalty. Simmons now with the tap, does so, gets it back to Dowling, charging forward. Dowling right up to the 10 metre line before he's knocked to the ground by Ward. He'll play it back to Simmons once again. Simmons, it goes on his own, gets it back to Big Noel Cleal down the blind side, but he's dropped by solid defence. He'll get up to play the ball. It was Ward once again. Back to Simmons, goes across to Sterling, out to Wally Lewis, good pass out to Kenny. Kenny holds another one up for Miles over the top. Great football! try and the magic of Kitty, the magic of Miles and the Great Britain crowd have applauded that try and it's wrapped it up for Australia. It's now Australia 26 to 10. A brilliant try to Michael O'Connor. Three tries to O'Connor on the left flank for Australia. Sign on eye John Harker. What a sensational try. Oh, there's no wonder they call him the best player in the world. The dummy as he was going down the great pass to Miles and then Miles the basketball pass over the top to Michael O'Connor. 
Gee, you could make a good living being Michael O'Connor today, couldn't you? Catch the ball and run, and you'll score a try. Fantastic stuff from Miles and uh, Kenny. There was some chat before the game that maybe Meninga would take over in the centres from uh, Gene Miles. He has been one of the form players, but Gene Miles certainly knocked that for six today, hasn't he? A great game from both him and Kenny. Well, Here's the kick. They love playing together, Miles and Kenny, and they're really giving Great Britain something to think about here at Old Trafford. 26 points to 10 to Australia. 17 metres out as high. It's going to drop short, I think. Just a little bit short, no gold. Three out of seven for Michael O'Connor. He's been a busy boy on the left wing for Australia here at Old Trafford. A magnificent crowd, 50,583. As I said, a record in England for Test Match football. It eclipses the former record of uh, just over 42,000 in 1948 at Oddsville Stadium. So, a great crowd here at Old Trafford. The kick has just gone to 10 metres. No, it hasn't. It's a penalty to Australia. Hasn't gone to 10 metres from the kickoff. And a penalty to Australia to uh, restart play from that magnificent try scored by Michael O'Connor, laid on beautifully by the peaches and cream combination of Gene Miles and Brett Kenny. OK, now we're back for this penalty to the centre of the halfway line. And Wally Lewis making up his mind which way to go. Well, there's only one way to go, and that's with the wind kicking across towards the far side of the ground. And, oh, gee whiz, yes, it finds touch right on the, or a metre from the Great Britain quarter line. The tap to be taken by Simmons. Simmons now just waiting. Taps it now, gives it across to Sterling. Out for Dowling, turns it back to Sterling. Down the blind side to Lewis, then turns it inside to Jimmy Jack. Gary Jack trying to get it away, but he's scrambled by uh, Bill House. He'll get up to play the ball. It's with Simmons, goes across to Sterling. Out now to Neveling, beautifully taking the football. Only eight metres away from the Great Britain goal line. He'll get up to play the ball. It's back again. It goes out to Cloud. Cloud charging forward. I thought there was a hit of a forward pass there. But he's now a quarter metre short of the line. Referee Rashid now is on his backside as Australia go towards the goal line. He did a Hartley, but he got up pretty quickly. Simmons now from the back of the ruck tries to go on his own, but he's off to the ground. One tackle left to go. Six inches away. He can smell it. He just can't get to it. But he's up the flat back to Lewis. Cross to Sterling. Steps through, straight into the arms of Lee Crook, ducks under one, ducks under another, takes off downfield, but he just runs out of petrol. Good run by Lee Crook to be straight Britain forward, not giving up, and uh, this straight Britain side certainly showing a lot of commitment. Oh, Hanley now, running beautifully under the ball, but he's got his mate suffering by Bobby Linda. That's a great tackle, applauded to by Peter Sterling. He plays the ball, goes across the gill, out the box, the field house. A long pass, beautifully picked up by Schofield. Schofield now got his feet stopped from under him. 32 metres out from the Great Britain line. Marchant, a long pass to Fox. Couldn't handle it. Look at Sterling, knock on both ways, Raskinaris. The scrums in the game are 5-4 to Great Britain and the penalties 13-10 to Great Britain. But the all-important scoreline at Old Trafford with 67 minutes gone of the first rugby league test is Australia 26 leading Great Britain 10 and all five tries to Australia scored by the back indeed all seven in the match scored by the back Joe Lydon comes back onto the field he's done his penance in the sin bin Steve Roach is still there as Sterling gets the ball for Australia up the blind side to Gary Jack oh and Jack nearly makes the bus too Pete but eventually he's dropped by Joe Lydon just short of the English quarter line he'll get up to play the ball back to O'Connor given out now to Dowling charging forward and showing plenty of courage but he's knocked down by Fieldhouse, 18 metres out from the Great Britain goal line. He'll get up to play the ball again. It's with Simmons. Wide across the Neveling, turns it to Lewis. Good pass out now to Linda. Linda, a good pass to Kenny to Miles. Over the top, would you believe? They won't catch him. And a knock on, definitely a knock on there by Henderson Gill. It was almost a try to Melbourne Inca for Australia. He's shaking his head. What's he shaking his head for? Oh, well, he doesn't know the rules, obviously. It was a blatant knock on. And even Raskinar has had to pull that one up and uh, the scrum will go down, it'll be a feed to Australia and Sterling will feed the scrum 18 metres out from the Great Britain goal line. Australia leading by 26 points to 10. And
hand in there. Well, I couldn't see it. We had a pretty good view of that. And uh, Raskett now is red off this bloke, Ben Ingham. He's continuing his onslaught against the Australians in the second half. But Australia are going to beat the 13 Englishmen and the French referee before a record crowd of 50,583 at Old Trafford. The tap by Watkinson out the box. Good pass on the lead. Crooks, he holds one up for Ward. Sterling around the legs to pull him down. 28 metres out from the Englishman's goal line. He'll get up to play the ball. Back it goes to Andy Goodway. Across the Fox. Good pass out for Crook. Straightens up the attack. Looks back to offload. Fox was there, but he just couldn't slip it away as he gets up the flat. Back down to Derek Fox. Out to Andy Goodway. Fox on the wrap around. And he's done a lot of work this afternoon, but he has pulled down and a good tackle around the legs by Bobby Linder. It's played back to Watkinson. Out there to Goodway. Races through. Chips over the top. Beautifully picked up by Big Malmeninga. But he's knocked down by Goodway. A shade over the halfway line in Great Britain territory. He's up to play it back to Gene Miles. From the back of the ruck, Miles tries to get going off. And he's beautifully picked up. And he's driven into the turf. He's up as a good tackle, Peter. It certainly was, Greg. Penalties in the second half. 9-2 to two in favour of Great Britain. John Harker. Sideline eye, can you see this Great Britain side uh, going on with the job in the second half? This is normally where they really die. Yeah, but I think they're a little bit fitter this side, uh, Peter, and they seem a little bit more committed, but uh, with the amount of help they're getting from the penalties, that should be OK. But I just saw Sean Edwards warming up. I would be surprised to see him come on. It'll be somewhere in the back line. I'm not sure where, but maybe even for Derek Fox. He's very nippy around the scrum base. He's played a little bit of halfback. I had a word to Les Kiss. He's popped a shoulder. Bad news there. OK, and Wally Lewis failing to find touch. And the ball beautifully taken by Tony Marchant on the far side of the ground here at Old Trafford. So Great Britain trailing Australia by 26 to 10. Fox makes a half a break, but he's put down on his own corner line in a very good tackle by Greg Dowling, who's had a great game for Australia. Goes across the Cook. Now, oh, a good pass to Andy Goodway, but he's put it down. Sterling couldn't pick it up. Eventually, it's been picked up now. By oh, Linda. Linda, Linda still going, still going, but just short of the line. Gee whiz, he must be only inches away from it. And it was uh, Watkinson from behind pulling him down. He'll get up to play the ball. Back to Gene Miles. Out to Big Melman in the Ducks under one. Wheelhouse came over the top to try and knock his block off. He missed his target. He's played it back to Simmons. Goes across to Sterling. Good pass now. Out to Niebling. On to Gary Jack. And Jack is pulled to the ground by Schofield. He'll get up to play the ball. Schofield gets off him, that is. Up now. Back he goes to Simmons. Out to Wally Lewis. Good pass. out to Dowling. Dowling trying to set his man up on the outside. Gives it back to Michael O'Connor. Back to Lewis. On to Sterling. Sterling tries to straighten up, but he's had the ball knocked from his possession. And the knock-on has occurred, so a scum will go down. Just outside the 10-metre mark. Great in Britain into the ground. Australia trying to keep the football alive there. And uh, to no avail. Peter Sterling put down, losing the ball. Uh, only 10 metres out from the Great Britain goal line. Australia with a five try to two advantage and that's about the difference between these two football sides. Great Britain have won the scrum but Bobby Linder who's having a good second half for Australia put Fox down fairly quickly. Good strong run by Andy Goodway. The Great Britain loose forward. He makes it up just short of the quarter line in his own territory. Gets up to play the ball now. Back to Marchant. Drops the Fox. Out the lead. Crooks and a long pass. Oh, Marlon's put it down. Australia now. Five metres out from the Great Britain line. Brett Kenny there to pick it up. Oh, plays it back to Marlon. Marlon takes off. Still going. He's, he's going over Australia. for a try. Or is that he? Yeah, he scored the try. No doubt about it. He's ruled to knock on. It's definitely a try to Australia. Yeah, it's a try. Yes, he's given a try now. Gene Miles has made it a hat trick. So a hat trick of tries by Gene Miles and Michael O'Connor. And Australia move into the 30s now. That's where we expected them to be. And Australia 30 leads Great Britain 10 at Old Trafford. Gene Miles charging over from dummy half. And a very easy try. Sideline eye, John Harker. An easy try it was. And a very, very happy coach, Don Ferner. Don, how do you feel? Well, it's great to come over here and get that first win up the boys have played well right throughout we had a spasm there where they run into about eight penalties in a row that took our momentum away but other than that we've had a game under control right throughout and to come over here and get away with the first test like this it's just got to be a happy occasion for Australian Rugby League and all the supporters I'm as terribly happy about it all uh, I mightn't show it emotionally up but I, underneath I, I'm really proud of the boys tremendous win in front of this great crowd of 50,000 people and all it is is as I said I'm very very happy about it 
OK, I... there he is. Uh, our coach today, Don Ferner, the Australian national coach. He's a very happy boy, uh, John Harker. Yes, he certainly is a very happy boy. And uh, why wouldn't he be? The way the uh, forwards have performed and, of course, uh, the centre pairing of uh, Kenny and Miles, they've really ripped into pieces. And uh, the only bad news, as I said earlier, let's kiss with that pop shoulder, but that should be OK. OK, so it's three tries each to Gene Miles and to Michael O'Connor. O'Connor converted that last try, scored by Gene Miles underneath the upright, and it's Australia now, 32 to 10, over Great Britain and Old Trafford before a record crowd. And a scrum now to be put down, a knock-on by Michael O'Connor. It wasn't a good pass from Peter Sterling. But now the scrum going down to be worked by Fox for Great Britain. And a penalty to the Australian side. Second row feed, he says. There he is now with that signal. Boy, he's pretty precise, Escanaris. He certainly is. Greg, um, I'm sure that this effort by Michael O'Connor, 20 points, is a uh, equals the record for Australia in a test match in Great Britain, 20 points. And uh, certainly a great effort today by the win three-quarter for Australia, Michael O'Connor. Yes, Peter, great effort as we see Australia go forward right up to the 30-metre line. Big block of Roach. He's still got plenty of petrol left. Well, so is this big like, big crusher, Cleal, going forward too. And he's just short off the quarter line. He'll get up to play the ball. Back to Simmons. Out to Sterling. Cole Simmons around. Turns it back inside the Roach. Roach ducks under one. Was really going to pop one up. But just couldn't get his pass away as he's knocked to the ground by Crooks. Terry Lamb coming on for Australia in a moment. Peter Sterling ducks away from one, still going, but eventually he's knocked to the ground 12 metres out from the Great Britain line. He plays it back to Linda. After Lewis pops one over the top, Miles can't handle it. Manages to go back and dive on the loose ball. One tackle left to go. 15 metres out from the Great Britain line. Can the Aussies put another four-pointer on the board? Simmons across down to Sterling. He puts the high kick up. Gary Jack going to... Oh, he scored! be celebrations in the Dragonara Hotel in Leeds tonight where this young Australian side what a brilliant back line, great kick by Peter Sterling and a try to Australia John Harker yeah fantastic, that's why they call him the magician Peter Sterling, he hasn't had his greatest of games, uh, he's been unhappy at times with a couple of lost balls but gee he's given good service to his outside back, that's why they've been able to play so well and this sort of kick, well that's magic and Gary Jack great reward too, he came steaming through from an onside position I might add and uh, was just too good for Fox and easy under the post. And I'm sure Michael O'Connor won't have too many problems making this 22 points. Yes, and uh, I'm sure that will then be an outright record for Michael O'Connor in a test match in, uh, in uh, Great Britain. So it's Australia now leading this test match by 36 points to 10 with a kick to come from uh, Michael O'Connor. This will be five out of eight for Michael O'Connor. So a tremendous performance today by the Australian side. OK, this kick now from O'Connor, more or less right in front of the post. Ten metres out from the line. Should be easy meet for Michael. There he goes now. He's got the extra two points. No problems whatsoever. So Australia now lead by 38 points to 10 here at Old Trafford. Australia 38 lead. Great Britain 10. And that's five goals from eight attempts to Michael O'Connor. And Australia racing away with a test match now. A great win to Australia. And Great Britain, well, what can they do? They've had this side in a training camp. They've improved their fitness. But still, Australia, give them a football well, now we've got Roach from the recommencement taking the ball 30 metres out from his own line and put down on a solid tackle over the top by Goodway. He's played back to Simmons. Simmons tries to go from the back of the ruck on his own, but he's knocked to the ground. Terry Lamb on for Bobby Lindner for Australia, and it's 36 points to 10 in favour of the green and gold. Sterling now kicks downfield, forcing Joe Lydon to go across in company with March. It's the ball too fast for both those Englishmen, and the flag goes up on the far side, 26 metres out from the Great Britain line and as Pete said Lamb on now this will be interesting because he's had uh, eight tries I think Pete is that right yes yeah, certainly the last two games yeah he certainly has eight tries in the last two games and a tremendous performance by Terry Lamb in uh, his matches in Australia and he certainly deserves to get a chance in this game today and Wally Lewis now packing into the lock position as the ball is fed by... Terry Fox. Lamb playing 5-8, Wally Lewis lock. Yep, goes out now beautifully to Lydon. Lydon out to Schofield, gives it out to Hanley. Then out to Gill. Gill comes inside one. Gets himself going again. He can still motor this fight. Gary Jack eventually putting him down. As he scrambles to his feet to 
play the ball. He fell down that time. Oh, geez, he got a penalty then. Uh, oh, dear, I can't... Uh, I hope the cameras uh, aren't close up. Yes, Greg. <laughs> I'm sure they are, and I'm sure they captured that. There's the kick for the sideline. Now by Derek Fox. Great Britain would love another try. They've been uh, beaten today, soundly beaten by this Australian side. 36 to 10 is a real hiding. Goes out now into the arms of Ward. Ward knocked to the ground, centre field. 25 metres out from the Australian goal line. Only a few minutes left to play at Old Trafford. Australia, 36 lead, Great Britain 10. Oh, Lee Crook through the gap. He's got a man on the outside and one on the inside. No bell over. No bell over for the Englishman. OK, Australia has conceded a try. Gary Schofield has gone in for his second try of the game. It was 38 to 10 before that try. Now 38 to 14 in favour of Australia. 38 to 14, a try to Gary Schofield for Great Britain. And a very good try it was too. And sideline by John Harker, a reward broad, but a good backing up by Gary Schofield. Yes, yeah, well, for mine, it was a reward for the two most constructive players in the team. It's a copyright uh, of their first try. Again, Crook's coming onto the ball hard, unlike the rest of the uh, Great Britain forwards for that matter, and he just threw the men to him, two men, popped the pass inside to Schofield, and Schofield always backing up. That's why, as I said, he once scored four tries. And let's see where they can make it uh, 38 points to 16 here with this kick. Very happy Australian bench down there, John. Oh, they're absolutely elated. They are uh, really coming in here and seeing this crowd. Uh, this, this win is a lot greater than they would ever have imagined in their dreams because uh, the crowd like this of course was going to lift Great Britain and uh, all it's done is inspired the Australians I remember when the score was there's uh, Henderson Gill kicking that goal that makes it 38-16 uh, but I remember when the score was 16-0 Wally Lewis and Greg Dowling on the way off and there it is full time full time at Old Trafford Australia 38 have beaten Great Britain 16 Australia 38 have beaten Great Britain 16 in a very entertaining test match in difficult condition before a crowd of 50,583 at Old Trafford. Australia tries today, three tries each to Gene Miles and Michael O'Connor, a try to Gary Jack, five goals from eight attempts to Michael O'Connor, and for Great Britain, two tries to Gary Schofield, one to Joe Light, a goal to both Lee Crooks and Henderson Gill. The statistics of the game, Australia have uh, won the match by 38 to 16, the penalties went to Great Britain by 15 to 12, and the scrums to Great Britain by 7 to 5, and the Australian going over to the green and gold contingent here at Old Trafford, over 500, 600 Australians, the green and gold shows proudly here, and the Australian showing their acknowledgement, Wally Lewis and his team going over, and included there are the 2GB group.